Oh man, it's been, what, a year since we've played Human Echo? And they finally released today the second half of Human, e Human Echo, the uh, answer arc. So yeah, let's, let's get this going. As you guys might know, this will probably be a really long playthrough with really long videos of me constantly getting that breath and blah blah blah. So, I guess episode 5. This story is very obviously fictional and fantastic in nature. Any resemblance to existing individuals or connections, and I didn't get time to read it. <laughs> <sighs> you idiot! Isn't it obvious? It'll be fun to kill her and see her face twist in pain. Why else? Yeah! <laughs> look, look, don't turn your eyes away. Look at it. Look, look. It's magic. It's furniture. No matter how much you try to deny me, I'm magic. Look, 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 look. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Battler. It was pretty fun. Sure, I just did what the teacher told me, but look how great it turned out. Apparently, if you stare at our all hostile, needlessly brutal, then turn incompetent and solve at just the right moment, you could spark a huge bump on your affection meter, right? Yeah. <laughs> I honestly don't remember much of the ending of the last one. Some catching up would have been nice. Like last time on Dragon Ball Z kind of deal, I don't know. Uh, that lonely tone was the desolate sound of the wind blowing by. The glittering rose petals on these bushes were all golden. The cloud of gold butterflies that had once danced throughout this golden rose garden like fluttering rose petals was no longer anywhere to be seen. The master of the Golden Land is the Golden Witch Beatrice. She might be called inhuman and cruel, arrogant and outrageous, or perhaps naive and simple. That laugh of hers, which lost its grace more and more the longer it continued, could no longer be heard. The Golden Witch Beatrice sat like a doll resting in a deck chair adorned as beautifully as the Golden Rose Garden itself. She wasn't relaxing there. Her eyes were empty. She didn't respond to any questions. Even so, she was not permitted to sleep. Beatrice sat like a doll. Her hair was down, and Virgilia was carefully tending it to her with a clone. The usual Beatrice would surely have spent this time complaining about this and not regarding her hairstyle. However, she made no response, showed no reaction, so it really only looked like Virgilia was combing the golden hair of a large doll. There was a table alongside them. On it stood a chessboard along with a jumble of black and white pieces locked in a closely fought battle. However, this setup looked somehow different from normal chess. Maybe the game was similar, though not identical. And on the other side, sitting back in his chair as he contemplated his next move was a young man. No, perhaps it wasn't his next move he contemplated. Every once in a while, he would change the position of the pieces reconsidering the situation after every change. Maybe he was reconstructing previous games, trying to discover the thought process behind the moves that had been made. In the past, Kenzo, the Ushiramiya family had once said that learning chessboard arrangements was like taking a journey throughout the thoughts of the old masters. Ushiramiya Battler was on a journey, a search for the thought process that led the Golden Witch to create this arrangement and make these moves. Battler took a, piece, a black piece that should have been moved forward and returned to its original place. Sighing deeply, Battler's pieces were white. However, on this chest the black encampment, encampment was on Battler's side. He was reconstructing that arrangement, trying to play Beato's role. The more I do this, less I understand your moves. Even Battler didn't expect that Beato would respond to that statement. Whether he was pretending to talk to himself, thinking there might still be a chance of her responding. Beato's eyes reflected nothing, and her mouth told nothing. After begging him to kill her, the Golden Witch had become a corpse that had given up on life. She wasn't sleeping, she couldn't step down from this game, and was therefore forbidden to sleep. So those words must have reached her ears. However, they probably hadn't reached her heart. The Golden Witch 
would not sneer at Butler's nose, nor would she praise him or bat at little hand at him. But now Beatrice knew them more than a living doll. Even so, she would glance at him once in a while. It would be an empty glance, but a glance nonetheless. Sometimes she would seem to make some sort of gesture or even move her lips. However, her movements never managed to communicate anything to Battler. How did she decide on this move in that situation? I don't get it at all. I don't understand your moves. Be it toe. Battler kind of talking to you. Say something. Giggle or guffaw or something. Even use that short laugh of yours if you want. Can you believe it? That sure laugh of Beatles will never be heard again. However, even if she couldn't answer, his voice surely reached her. That was what Battler believed as he said these words. So he said it again. How did he decide on this move in this situation? I don't get it at all. I don't understand your moves. So you don't understand what this child is thinking? But Julia answered him and answered in her disciples stead. Up to this point, she had done her best to avoid speaking for Beato. After all, there was a chance that Beato would respond in some way, and Virgilia didn't want to be the one to steal that chance. So Battler was going to have to bear with his silence, until Beato herself answered. Virgilia could no longer bear to watch Battler like this. Besides, Battler also wanted to hear what Virgilia had to say. He believed that conversation would reach Beato's heart. Yep, I don't have a clue. That more I tried to stand in Beato's shoes and moving the pieces like this, the less I understand, a serial murder following an epitaph. With that as a victory condition, I tried reconstructing the games from the witch's side, but I never ended up making the moves Beato did. In those games, I could find several incomprehensible moves that clearly worked against that victory condition. I don't get it at all. This journey through her thoughts is just too rugged. Even so, you won't give up, will you? I won't. I promised. Kill me. Let me die. I promise to let her die peacefully, and I'm the only one who can do it. Beto's right ankle was bound with a heavy, cold steel shackle. It was a tight end thing, so it didn't restrict her movement. However, it symbolized restriction. It was a visualization of the bonds that prevented her from leaving the game until she either won or lost, and those shackles probably hurting her. The mercilessly cold shackle tormented her over and over inside her waking during... Ugh. So there was no any sign of relief in her empty expression. Her eyelids would sometimes tremble like she was having a nightmare, and every once in a while she would let out a pain gasp. Unless I win, Beato will never be released from the curse that prevents her from sleeping peacefully. Are you sure you want to be doing this? It seems the fifth game has already started. Not interested. Why should I take part in any game as Beato is my opponent? If that's the only alternative, then it's much better using my time to reconstruct previous games while taking a journey in search of Beto's thought process. I'll be the next game master. Any objections? You've got none, right? I've got nothing but objections. Beto conceded the fight and is unconscious. Isn't this a loss by default and game over for her? Well, I made a loss happen to Beto and she's basically being KO'd right now. But that doesn't mean she's lost the world of fight. That's why I'm acting as her assistant. Get it? Beto was lying down on a deck chair almost as though she was sleeping. However, she wasn't sleeping and she wasn't awake either. She was nothing more than a living doll that had given up on victory, who had asked Butler to perform her last rites, and who had surrounded everything. Of course, if anyone just sat around the next game, the fifth game would never be made ready. So, Lambda Delta has to see the Beato as the next game master, and announced that she prepared the next game. Quit messing around. This is the game between me and Beato. I don't know who you two are, but I'm not going to let you carry on without us. No one asks for your opinion. We all do, Burn. Except my challenge or not. <sighs> sure, go ahead and inherit her role. The hell? Quit messing around. I don't know who you people are, but I'm not going to let you ignore Beato and me just carry on by yourselves. Hey, take it easy. Are you okay? Are you sure? And you play playing major face and kinds of moves. I'm sure you'll see a lot of stuff that confuses you, but even that might lead to some big hints, get it? Who cares? Quit saying whatever you want and decide everything on your own. Beatles game has repeated four times and you still don't understand anything, right? In that case, they expect that swapping on the opponents might lead to some new chance. That's none of your business. This is our game. Beatles prepared it and she decided, uh, blah, and she 
designated me to be her opponent. And I don't know what whole YouTube crap that up, but I don't want you to be screwing things up. In that case, wake up, be a dumb, and Kara get the next game ready. Can you? Be a dumb, get up for a while. Anyway, we don't even need to have another game. The four games should already let out more than enough. And even if we do some fifth game, there's no reason they should just a puzzle be the lays out and I take on. There's absolutely no reason for you to butt in. Butler couldn't hide his irritation at the two witches called Lambda Delta and Birkenstell, who has shown up well after the game start and who are now trying to make, take charge on their own. It looked like these witches were of even higher ranks than Beato, so I in fact even Beato's teacher, but Juliet couldn't even come close. Butler had the feeling that he'd seen these two several times before. However, this is the first time he'd known their names and spoken to them directly. You can't get the next game ready without waking me, though. That's why I'll prepare the next game. We aren't so patient that, that we we're willing to wait forever for Beto to regain consciousness. Right, Burn? I don't like boredom. It really ticks me off. We really don't give a damn whether you're bored or not. Come on now, leave everything to this perfect Linda Delta sum, okay? I'll take over as the game master. Don't worry, I won't play with too much absolute perfection. Just like Beto, I'll set up plenty of incorruptible fake clues and bonus sense. I'll make this game a huge hint that'll help you understand Beto's world even better, okay? Letting my voices and emotions explode, I slam the table hard. The two witches didn't flinch at all. One grand, the other looked indifferent as though nothing had happened. The two of them just stared at me silently, as though they were reapproaching me. What's this? I'm not satisfied? Are you saying you'll step down for my fifth game? Is it that a loss by default? Battler won't step down. Of course, he'll participate in the fifth game. Don't just decide that yourself. I'm not going to play along with you two. I don't give a shit. Mm, then it really is a loss by default, right? The witch side wins this game. Is it really okay to end this witch? And it, this is the human surrendering. If you step down, the game will end with your loss by default. Get it? If you want to guarantee that your lonely sister always meets with miserable circumstances in an endless number of worlds, that option is indeed open to you. When Berkestal mentioned Ange, Battler's expression changed instantly. But you bastard, don't you dare talk about Ange so lightly. Because you too, because you have an ally in me, Berkestal, with the Witch of Miracles, there exists the possibility of a miracle on which Ange's family comes home to her. Well, if you do throw that chance away and guarantee the Ange's endless futures, all and in sorrow, that might be pretty interesting too. I vaguely understood what she was saying. Until I won a Beatles game, I'll remain trapped in this bizarre world. And if I abandon that victory, then most certainly my parents and I will never return to Ange. For Ange's sake, even though I know that the witches are toying with me, I must keep on fighting. <clears> the <throat> damn it. What's wrong? You look unsatisfied. Have you already forgotten how angry you were with your sisters? We're starting to mince me. You know that spectacle. But she's starting to bear just the pieces by countless red hot pliers. You better watch it more closely next time, okay? Birkin stopped pointing at the palm of her right hand upwards. As she did, a pale light gathered there, and some kind of blue glowing crystal appeared there. A scene was reflected on its sharp surface, but it wasn't the scene that surrounded them now. If you looked deep into that crystal, that fragment, then you would probably learn what was reflected on there. If you stared at it, then you'd surely see the end. Ange finally reached it, waiting 12 years of giving up everything for the sake of her beloved brother. The scene of her death throws as her entire body was thrown up bits while she still lived. Damn you. Without thinking, he grabbed her at her collar, but as soon as he touched what made her perform, it disappeared like foam on the waves. Then, as naturally as though she had been there from the beginning, Perky still was leaning against a distant wall. If you step down from the game, this will become not just a fragment, but a different reality. I won't be the one to create that future. You'll do it yourself. So decide, okay? Figure out what you want to do with your beloved little sister's future. That list was shook with anger, but even if you swung them down, he wouldn't be able to hit Brick and so. This witch was like a phantom more a cat who would have even listened to her better if she, if she didn't wish for it. And she was telling the truth. For any sake, I can't step down from this fight. Even if these unpleasant witches hijacked the game board. Hehehe, <laughs> that's just like you burn. You're even heartless when you threaten people. That's how it is, Battler. You aren't allowed to step down from the game board. You and Beto are nothing more than pieces on the board that exist to distract us from our boredom. 
even your anger and visible anger and irritation make for a wonderful treat to satisfy us. Well, what you're going to do now only makes for a cheap snack, though. Let those curry flavored potato wafers they sell for a 30 yen a pair. <laughs> you damn witches. <laughs> Fight for Andrew's sake, okay? And for our beetles, too, right? In a way that was astonishing, or perhaps a baby, and like the headache you get after eating something too sweet. Bring us all tormented, Batlon smiled. By now, the host of this tea party beetle was absent. The guests, which is, were already making themselves at home. What you'll do, you sure me a battler. Will you surrender to fate? Just step down. You'll have enough of being toyed with as, as a witch's piece, right? Hehe, <laughs> it sure is tough being one of Burns' pieces. I'm sure she'll use you and throw you away just like she did with Ange. <laughs> I'm not giving you up the option of, I'm not giving you the option of stepping down. Keep fighting for the sake of your sister's future. I'm your ally until you win. I'll support you so you can reach that future. For all eternity until I get bored. <laughs> I can't let her provocation and culture round me up. These witches know I get mad easily and they're trying to take advantage of that. Battler with a stood it all and finally relaxed his clenched fist. If you want to start this fifth game of yours, go ahead and do it. Do whatever you want. Yes, I will do whatever I want. Hey, where are you going? Even though Battler can hold his fifth game, he turned his back on them. Much to it landed up the surprise. If you're going to be beat to substitute, then I'm sure that Brooke Estelle Witch over there can stand in for me if she wants. Not a bad idea, better than a loss by default. What the heck? Are you going to just ignore this episode 5 that I put so much effort into making? Rude. Rude. Battler says he's going to take a break for a while. Until he comes back, I'll be his substitute. How's that sound, Battler? You do that. What's wrong, uh, Lambda? So you'll refuse to play if it's against me instead of that fool, Battler? Hehehehe, <laughs> of course not. I'm glad I get to play with you, Burn. Come on, let's play, let's play. Let's play together in Lambda Delta Sama Super Hyper and Cute Episode 5. This is, technically is a world for you created. You aren't going to ruin the atmosphere of the story, are you? Don't worry about that. I'm really good at reading between the lines with that sort of stuff. I made sure to use Beato Wish atmosphere to make that tale. That's even more interesting. Butler, make sure you come back as soon as your break's over, okay? It'd be a shame to miss this. I set up plenty of bonuses and I'll get you closer to Beato's secrets. Or at least that's what it looked like when it's actually filled with misdirection. It makes more stuff and more and more confusing. Wait, hey, Battler, why aren't you listening when the witch is talking? Without answering, Battler disappeared into the darkness. After shrugging and cackling, the witches immediately started playing with the game boards they had stolen from Beato. So are we finally gonna get back to, you know, the mansion and stuff, or what? You know, switches really understand Beto's game. Since they're using the same game board, they cannot do anything that this child could not do. However, they could do things that this child wouldn't do. <sighs> what do you mean things she wouldn't do? That materials of chess exist so that you can play chess. You cannot use them to play cards. However, when it comes to throwing chess pieces at your opponent and scribbling on the board, such things are not impossible to do. However, that would be a blasphemy against the game of chess, so people choose not to do that. That definitely wouldn't be chess anymore. Beto's eyes seem to close slightly with sadness. Damn them, this game's between me and Beto. I won't let anyone else defile it. At that time, gold butterflies gathered and Ronald appeared holding a tea set of black tea. Would you like some more tea? If you wouldn't mind. Certainly so. How goes this journey of yours sister's and my thoughts? I don't have a clue, but I'm enjoying it. However, are you sure about this? Is it truly alright for you to relax here? You mean the game those witches just started all by themselves? Indeed, just now when I went to serve them some tea, the murders of the first twilight had already taken place, and it seemed as though the next murder would occur shortly. When Beto and I were playing, the game would be paused whenever someone left their seats. However, those witches wouldn't pause that game just because I wasn't around. Growing up, did you see their game? Just a part of it. 
How was it? When I looked at the pot high with an elegant gesture as he poured the black tea. After finishing that, he finally spoke. He gave us his impressions of it. It did not have love. What do you mean, love? My apologies, that is how a woman might put it. As a man, one might call it dishonorable. I understood those words meant. When I met Virgilia's eyes, she shook her head slightly and stared at the floor. I believe it resembles my latest games greatly on the surface. However, its foundation is quite different. Does it go against the rules of Beto's game? No, it does not. Lanta Sama actually does understand the rules of my latest game very well. However, Butler stood up. There was no need to make Ronov Satan anymore. Butler Khan. Sorry, Ronov. I know you weren't all do all the trouble of pouring this for me, but tea is what is isn't what I need. So you will go after all. Yeah. We don't need any outsiders in our game. These guys were even here in the beginning because I've been loving about crazier and crazier witches have been introduced. And now they've hijacked this game between me and Beatrice. I gotta take it back. Right now I'm supposed to be the one taking care of Beatrice's game board. That means I can't just sit around here. Thank you. I wanted to let this child hear those words. I'm sure she hears them. My lady is simply unable to answer. Peter lay there silent like a living doll with dull eyes. The game board she created herself had been hijacked by incomprehensible people and was being turned to a mess. If it's designated to be her opponent, then Peter must have created this game for me. I've got to take it back. Wait here, I'll go and take it back. Of course, Beto didn't respond in any way. That's right. If she can't respond, then I have to protect it in her place. I'll be right here. I mean, I'll be right back. Virgilia or no. I'm counting on you two to look after this golden sleeping beauty. Yes, leave it to us. See you later, Battler Khan. And please, end the game without this child, try to find some part of her. If you can, but even if this child is upset, you won't mean you have fought with her. You're right. Uh -huh. It's all useless. What am I doing? Let's go and let's take, let's take it back. So to keep you waiting, witches, my break is over. When he faced the jet black heavens and yelled this, the whole world shattered as though it would have made a thin glass. And as would have been that way since the beginning, it transformed into that smoking room where Battler had fought Beatles so many times, which the two witches and are now hijacked. What do you think you're doing? You're only coming back now? It's way too late. Not only has the game reached its second day, it's already at the final, at the finale, get it? You never showed up, so I don't just advance things on my own. Yeah, like you've been waiting for me in the first place. Burn was way more skillful on than you were, right? Shut up. I'm the player. You substitute witches can just take a step back now. Well, I don't really mind if you join in and start it now. There's probably no need for you anymore. Seriously, after all, we're already at the climax. After this, Burn will probably quarter me and win. What the hell? <sighs> Nothing wrong with that, is there? Why don't we let him watch the final end game? Of course. Come on over, assure me a battler. It's almost completely over, but here's the cute and elegant game I made. Episode 5, End of the Golden Witch. Okay, so I guess it's just showing us who's still alive. Throat looks like it's been cut. Looks like her throat was cut. Her throat was cut. Looks like he was stung in the stomach. Throat looks like it was cut. Okay, so Cross is still alive. Natsuhi is still alive. Eva Rudolph. Kyrie. Oh, Mariah's already dead. Kumasawa, Gota, Cannon, Shannon, Nancho, Kinzo still alive, okay. Well, alright. Let's go. Ah. Uh, okay.
Okay. So how long have I been recording for? <laughs> wow. Hasn't really been that long. Feels like it's been longer than that, honestly. Right now, no humans exist on the sun except for those in this parlor. And with one exception, it has been shown that none of them have committed murder. And the culprit is among these people. Whoa, whoa. That means it's conclusive, isn't it? Unless the culprit is a witch who committed a murder with magic, that is. <sighs> it was you. You killed George. Killed my husband. Why? Why? I didn't kill anyone. I didn't. In the panic and with a voice that was far from calm, in a manner that was to put it coldly unsightly, Aunt Natsuhi denied the suspicion placed upon her. However, there was no longer any way around it. She stood up, brushed back her long hair, pointed at Aunt Natsuhi, and said it one more time. You're the culprit, Ushirimi Aunt Natsuhi-san. I don't like this song that's playing. Hope it's not a copyright song. <laughs> oh, well, big deal if it is. It's a good song. It's not Suhi. Please open up. As she knocked loudly and repeatedly, Natsuhi yelled. Shortly after, there was a heavy clunking sound, and the sound of the door to Kinzo's study unlocking could be heard. As the door opened, a heavily sweet, venomous odor flowed out. Natsuhi was always ashamed of how she automatically grimaced at that. Even though she thought it was rude to the family head, Cross was waiting for her inside the study. Now she flew into his arms. His father is, is he? Calm yourself. Doctor Nanjo is examining him now. But within an uncertain gait, that's who he walked towards the center of the study, supported by Cross. There are a dignified bed fitting for the Ushomir family head can be seen along with Nanjo, Genji, and Kumasawa. Dr. Nanjo, his father, after sighing deeply, Nanjo left the set of the bed. On the bed, Kenzo can be seen lying down to sleep. He died peacefully. I don't think Kenzo son had any regrets. Ah, father, father. Sobbing, Natsuki slipped over the chest of the man who had fallen to his sleep and which he would never awaken. Madam, please stay strong. Father, father, this is just too sudden. Ah! Natsuki couldn't stop crying over the death of the man whom she had loved like a second father. 
Kima saw her up as she's back consoling her. Cross slumped into his late father's favorite chair. By sitting there, he might have been immersed in memories of his departed father. Or perhaps he thought that by sitting there, he might be able to understand just a bit of the madness of Kinzo's later years, which he had never been able to comprehend before. And Nacho just had wished that... And Nacho, just as he had when Kinzo once sat in that chair, contemplating a chess move, turned his back and looked down over the outside world through a crack in the curtains. If only he had been sick in bed for a year or so first, I do wish he would have died after a great period during which the proper arrangements could have been made. It's the other way around. We should be glad that he was in high spirits until the very end. At least that's true as far as public appearances are concerned. Not to understand that as well. Ushiro Miyakinzo, who had risen like a comet and glittered like a supernova in the post-war business world, had died. His funeral would probably be of a fantastic scale, and it would also be the ceremony marking Cross's inheritance of the headship. He would have to arrange everything as the host of the event, carry out funeral diplomacy imperfectly, and make it clear to all that Ushiro Miyakinzo family still had enormous influence in the political and financial spheres. As Nanjo watched Cross, he was vividly reminded of the time when Kinzo had been suddenly selected as the Ushiro Miya family head, when Kinzo had been lost and confused. In this way, he was able to understand Cross's distress and sympathize with it. Natsu Isops eventually subsided, watching this and leaving Kumasawa to care for Natsu, he as a fellow woman, Genji returned to where Cross was, and as though asking what should be done, Genji lowered his head slightly. Genji said, and I will deal with the formalities. Cross on perhaps you could contact your relatives first. Cross with his hands still over his eyes didn't respond. Perhaps even though he had known this day would come, Cross really couldn't hide his shock at how suddenly it had reached him. Leave this to Dr. Nanjo and me, Cross. I might suggest that you first speak with Madame. Maybe she heard that or maybe it was a coincidence. As though responding to Genji's words as he came over, her eyes were red from crying so much, but she apparently understood that heavy responsibility that had been imposed on them even better than Cross did. Starting now, you are the head of the glorious Ushimiya family. Let us show everyone inside and out that you have splendidly succeeded your father. As your wife, I, Natsui, prepared to serve you until the day our coffers are laid down, lungs on each other. Ooh. Trying to encourage your husband, he was overcome with shock and she lent him some reassuring words when Cross finally lowered the hands that had been covering his face. He looked up at the ceiling with a blank expression and let a deep, deep sigh. Please stay strong. There are a great many people who will plan to devour everything Father has left behind. We must fight to protect Father's honor and wealth. That is the first responsibility of the issue of me ahead. I understand. I do understand. Dr. Anacho Genji, please take care of the legal and funeral arrangements. Especially you, Genji. I ask that you take particular care and see to it that the funeral will be fitting one for Father. Certainly. And Dr. Nanjo, Father didn't pass away in the hospital, so... Indeed, an autopsy might be required depending on his circumstances. Can't you do something about that? Even though he has passed away, Father's body is precious. Any damage done to it would not be acceptable. I understand how you feel. However, it is also important to deal with these matters properly. And um, I don't really know how to say this, but several of the relatives might make things difficult, yes. Who knew how those vultures up there in the narratives might try to find fault with them? They might claim to have some kind of reason to suspect the cause of death. Okay, much better. Using that as a point of contention to start some trouble, right now it would be important not to only play Kinzo's remains with respect they were due, but also to solidify the position of the new family head cross. Understood. Please keep to it an absolute minimum. Make sure that the father's dignity is not damaged even by mistake. That will be fine. Do not worry. In any event, leave Kenzo's son to rest and stay by across the son's side. The thing, things will start to get quite difficult from here on out. I understand. And you too, dear. Please stay strong. Cross was still staring blankly at the ceiling with a befuddled expression on his face. She understood the shock and heavy responsibility he bore. That's who he understood her husband's feelings as much as anyone. I will contact the relatives. Please rest for the time being. Cross's, Cross didn't respond. As soon as that gave him to be just a little and unreliable at the moment, decided she must offer her support. Seeing her husband like this actually spurred Natsui to action and resolute expression hers to her face. Things will get busy from now on. Let's start by doing whatever we can create right now. Whatever we can right now. I'm sure my husband wants to have some time alone with father. We should step out for a moment. Good point. After all, this will probably be the last time he gets that chance. 
Being in charge of a funeral is tiring work. There's no time to shed tears. If Cross was there, they'd be giving time to cry for his dead father at that time, what it be now? That you wouldn't agree with Kumasawa's words. Even so, Cross continued to blink, blink least glazed up at the ceiling and didn't respond in any way. That's who he urged the servants to go. I'll go talk to Jessica, too. That child is not a successor to the headship. I'll make sure to tell her to be fully prepared. Wait, as they each started to make, each started to make their way out study. Cross finally spoke. They stopped walking. Yes? Wait. Yes? I didn't see her just stop walking, just like your husband had asked. But it's but that he told her once again to wait. From those slightly weak words, I see he understood that he probably stopped her because he wanted her to be right by his side. The rest of you downstairs, I will stay with my husband. Please call also on the phone if anything happens. Certainly. I thought I told you to wait. When Cross suddenly raised his voice, everyone jumped and turned around. Unable to comprehend what he had, she'd done to spark her after his wrath, Jesse ran up to him. What's wrong, dear? Have I said something rude? If so, please forgive me. No, no, that's not, that's not it. Wait a second, give me some time. Yes, I understand. It's important to start things outside your heart. We were just going to leave this place and someone else to give you some time, okay? And I'm telling you to wait before doing that. Listen up, no one move. Not even an inch. If you're tired, then feel free to sit in whatever chair or sofa you want. So just stay quiet and don't talk and don't do anything. Those unreasonable words felt like a glimpse of how Kenzo used to be. Not so you couldn't hide her slight the surprise that this behavior, which made almost made it seem like it's though Kenzo had possessed her husband. Not so you told the servants to wait for the time being. Showed her then on a sofa a short distance off, approached her husband, and spoke to him in a small voice. If you order it, I will wait however long you ask it won't move, so please try and calm yourself. No, that's not it, that's not it. Was it really blood, or was he actually being possessed? Cross's disorderly style of speech strongly resembled Kenzo's. As she watched, the see, became certain that Cross was Kenzo's son, after all, and that he was a true successor more suitable than any other person. That's who he come here. Cross stood up and headed towards the window, trying to leave the distance between himself and the servants, waiting on the sofa by even a small amount. That's who realized that he must have something secret to discuss. Yes, dear? What is it? Father dying is bad, but he has already passed away. We cannot turn back time. That's not it. It's bad that it happened now. What do you mean? I've been putting Father's fortune up as collateral. I won't be able to hide it when the division of the inheritance comes into question. But what? C collateral, you say? How much? You remember how I helped out Congo come back in Melody Land? Didn't I tell you to break ties with that person? I thought you said you refused him. Why? There is such thing as a man's honor. I couldn't refuse. Cross claimed to have hold honor as a virtue. However, Natsu knew that he most often used it as an excuse for when he reluctantly went along with some deal that he just couldn't refuse. That that wouldn't be a problem if we had plenty of money on hand, but it didn't you borrow quite a lot of money for the plan to turn this island to a resort? Yeah, I did, and there were people here and there who lent me a hand along the way. If I'm going to repay them, I can't just sit around on my hands. You need money to repay people, you need money to make money, or you can't even get started without make, without money. And that plan for the asylum would be proceeding smoothly if there only hadn't been any problems with the planning company. I made contact with a government official in the city. I even got the governor's word that this would become the newest travel destination in to Tokyo Metropolis. The groundwork I laid was completely perfect. Random chance of bad timing were against me. It was just a bit of bad luck, like a traffic accident. That was no accident. It was fraud. You were tricked. They were never drawing up plans for turning this island to a resort in the first place. That's not true. Yuji Kadokan's vision was simply overflowing with the foresight. The way his eyes always focused on the whole world and the future taught me that things I always believed to be mere dreams were only the tip of the iceberg of what was possible. Expand your dreams to the whole world, to the future. You heard him say that too, right? Yes, I heard it, and I think I remember telling you what I thought after we returned home. I saw that you were suspicious, and that he was only spoke of dreams and didn't have his feet planted on the ground. And that you must not have any further relations with them. Hichikata Khan is a wonderful, pleasant young man. Only one one could learn a lot from the way he lives. I can respect him despite his youth. I won't have you insulting him. That's what you said about the whole moon tourism thing. You kept saying it was a visionary. That I looked into the future that had high aspirations. And what was the end result? Eventually, you yourself admitted that it was utter nonsense, right? I was sure something was wrong ever since that strange man showed up claiming to be a high-ranking NASA official. That foreigner was nothing more than an international swindler. 
Both Mr. Sonzaki and I were victims in that case. Right now, his vision isn't mistaken. In the future, there will surely come a time when the richest person in the world develop a liking for space travel. In the very first enterprise in that area, will probably be monopolized by a single private company. That viewpoint is not mistaken. There was simply a ground of international swindlers who were trying to take advantage of the fact that this and deceive investors across the world. I'm trying to tell you that the Sonazaki man was one of them too. Just how gullible are you? Why do you always just accept suspicious offers without any doubts? Take that back. Mr. Sonazaki's a man with a brilliant future ahead of him. There's something suspicious about him. Because the James he thinks of anticipate the future, they sound crazy to people who can't see into the, see into the future. A woman like you can't see, into the, can't see into the future. Yes, a woman like me can't see into the future, but I can see the present. Right in front of me, I can see a pitiful husband who's been taken to his by sly, double-crossing swindlers that still trust him and implicitly after, even after he's been tricked. Shut your mouth. You don't understand anything about money or business or economics. Don't try to butt in on your husband's job. A wife should be satisfied with doing housework. Keep your mouth shut. Without another word, now she fell silent just as cross as I'd hoped she would. She was already far beyond anger and sadness, and the emotion that lay on the other side of those was almost in a different pity. Crossy was been in awe of Kenzo since he was very young. I started to subconsciously admire the way his father lived. Without realizing it, he had become to believe that he could only be recognized as a man in his own right if he surpassed his father. However, Kenzo had been a mad genius, the likes of which had never been, been seen before, uh, never been seen in Ushima from his long history. That talent was a gift from heaven, and it definitely wasn't genetic, much less than that could be learned. Give the two of them a chance to talk alone. That's who he told the servants not to tell anyone about Kenzo's death and then left the room for the time being. Then she invited Cross to her bedroom and made him tell her everything about their current financial situation. These things were th these were things that Natsuki had been told about under the assumption that a woman had no business knowing. Natsuki had made herself a point of avoiding this area in the past, again that it wasn't a wise place to intrude on such matters. However, this might be also meant that she had been in her duty as a wife to protect her family. The depth of this sin had been made quite clear to Natsuki. Cross was probably tired of trying to defend himself, perhaps because he had gotten a headache and he had hit his face and sick into silence. And so he noticed that the water in the electric kettle was boiling and stood up to refill her cup with black tea. When she touched the cup with black tea, she noticed for the first time that some of the cup and saucer were clicking together where that her fingers were shaking. Cross had built up a large step to obtain, uh, obtain funds for his various projects and to cover the losses when they failed. Of course, he had put up the mansion and property as collateral. However, doing such a thing above board would result in the mortgage being registered. In other words, there would be a record that Cross had put Kenzo's wealth up as collateral to obtain a loan without anyone's permission. Kenzo, Eva, and the others must have learned of such a thing. Therefore, Cross had been putting those assets up collateral using the worst possible method. I sighed over the deeds and I signed over the deeds in power of attorney. And what does that mean? Well, Cross was probably meant that he had, in essence, signed away the rights of his assets. If these assets had been used as collateral for a loan, then Cross would still have some leeway under the law. He would have to deal with a bank which would have absolutely no compassion, but they would be able to work something out within the rules by, so by society. However, signing away the deed and power of attorney has a whole different story. In other words, even the mansion they were living in, if the person holding the deed were to decide to ignore his agreement with Cross and sell the mansion to a third party right at this moment, they would have no recourse whatsoever. Far from using collateral for a loan, this was basically the same as selling their house to borrow money. In other words, the money lenders have the power to make or break the Ushomiya family as they please. If they were to suddenly sell our house on some slight whim, if we set to pack our bags and leave right now, wouldn't we? That is technically true. However, everyone I have dealings with is very repeatable. This is a consumer financing. It's a transaction based on trust between economically literal, literate man. I trust them, and they in turn trust that by lending me money, I will achieve great success in business and give them massive returns on their investment. I signed over the power of attorney as a good sign of faith, and so they wouldn't have to doubt in the certain success of my business. What happens if I hesitate now? Wouldn't that mean even if I have no confidence in my own business? If you were such a successful businessman, we wouldn't be in debt right now, would we? And that's why you only barely stopped yourself from saying that father is dead, and what happens next? Will your debt be exposed to the light of day, and will your siblings hold you responsible? That won't be all. It will probably lead to the criminal charges. 
criminal charges. Well, why is that? It's better if you don't know anyway. This is must not be learned of by anyone. The cross looked at the forest shamefully, shaking his head over and over. If it would have become the criminal charges that he must have broken some laws, he'd probably have been so intent on raising the large sum of money that it nothing mattered to him but survival. Cross had seriously believed that he was to see with severe several businesses and that he would definitely gain huge profits, so he had figured that even if he stepped over a few legal lines, he'd be able to pay everything back before too long and pretend nothing had never happened. This way I gave them Miss May gave in the fact that lessened his resistance towards breaking a couple laws. And now Kansas' death, the worst possible thing had occurred, and they wouldn't be able to keep it all hidden for long. What will happen to us? There is no need to worry. You may not believe it, but the conditions are most certainly on the rise now. The value of the city real estate I invested in will rise rapidly. Right now, I'm working on a project to interrogate those and construct a massive business tower. This will be the most reliable of all my investments so far and will prove to be the most successful. However, it will take a little more time for that to bear fruit. It's absolutely certain, but that doesn't mean it will happen now. Will the success of that venture be enough to pay back our debts? Of course it will. I'll be able to wipe out all those debt I have accumulated so far, so have faith in me. I only need a little more time. But Father's already dead. We don't have that kind of time anymore, do we? I know I know that. That's why I have to obtain the money from somewhere and pay off those debts right now. Anyway, I need money. Money, a lot of it right now. Arr. As Cross roared and clutched at his head, he ripped about it as if in pain. She watched several emotions swirled in about in Natui's chest. Her emotions conflicted as she felt pity for her husband while also feeling that he was a fool, and she felt a mixture of resentment and regret towards on her own irresponsibility in letting her husband run wild for so long. Even if this day hadn't come, it should have been clear that they were in a very critical situation, and yet he had carelessly waited for his moment to come, and this was now rithering about. Her husband was so foolish and so pitiful, it would be easy to let herself get fed up with this. However, she was, with, she was his wife. For a wife ridiculing her husband as a fool, she would run in conflict with responsibilities. If he was a fool, then she would have to support him and have to compensate. However, she didn't have a clue what she should do. Since there had been such a massive amount of money within arm's reach, it was only natural that Cross would try to dis dip his hands into it. It would also be easy to tell him that being a man and keep up, give up on all of it. But that would also run into conflict with her responsibilities. She was Ushimi and Natsuhi, the woman who had become Cross's wife and sworn to support him, the new head of the Ushimi Mia family for her whole life. She had somehow helped her husband in his efforts to raise money. She understood it logically, but she couldn't suppress the indescribable dejection that seemed to rise up from the dark depths of her heart. That's right, my father's getting gold. Ten times of gold is worth 20 billion yen. If I had that, that's right. If I had all that, our problems would be solved. And that's really, that's it. The witch's epitaph. Let's solve that. Let's solve it together. If we could just find the gold, everything will work itself out. That's right, it must be hidden somewhere on the island. If he had that, if we had that, that hurts, dear. Please stop it. Cross is acting as excited as if he thought up a perfect, brilliant plan grasped by Natsuhi's upper arms tightly. Natsuhi couldn't help but be dumbfounded. She wasn't just taken aback because she heard him bring up something as fake something as the hidden gold. This was Cross who usually mocked the story of the hidden gold, saying that it didn't exist and that it was an illusion that his father created, created to borrow a lot of money. This is why Natsuhi is doubt, 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 doubly taken aback. Yes, let's have Jessica help us too. Maybe some things can be solved with a child sensitivity. This is family crisis. All of us have to stick together. Yes, it's a fairly simple riddle that father created. We should be able to solve it, and there's no reason we wouldn't be able to solve it. It's, only, it's the only way. Oh, Natsuhi, this is wonderful. We still have an option left, and right here next to us. The gold is on this island. If we had it, every one of our problems would be solved. Wahahaha, <laughs> That's what he called Jessica here right away. Let's go overcome this family crisis together. Yes, right now, the gold is on this island and it's right behind us. Wah! And then with a whisper and the pain in his arm, he was twisted in excitement. That's what he knocked across his side. Cross tripped over the edge of the bed and flopped over onto the floor. Please get a hold of yourself and please calm yourself down. Do you really think that this Usher and me and family crisis could be solved by splitting his dream as like as that? That's who he. Please cool your head and think of a realistic plan to gather money. I'm going to go cool, cool my head as well. Wait, Natsuhi. Maybe he had come to senses that this instant he fell over. Cross tried to tell Natsuhi to stop, but she just kept walking. After closing the door forcefully, Natsuhi dashed it away. Natsuhi ran through the corridor. Even though she didn't want anyone to see her like this, she ran headlong into Genji. 
My deepest apologies, madam. Have you been injured? I am fine. Leave me alone. Certainly. Oh, Genji, how are your things going in Father's study? It's just as you left it, although Buck Ninja was in the parlor. Is that so? Do you have the key to the study? Yes, right here. Give it to me. Let me have some time alone with Father. My husband asks where I am. Tell him you don't know. Certainly. I've been grabbing the key to the study that Genji was holding out to her. Now, too, you rushed up to the stairs. She then, then flew into the study, finally let out a wail and cried. <sighs> Father, please forgive our foolishness. My husband and I aren't capable of inheriting all that you created. Please, please forgive us for our own foolishness and our crimes. And if you can forgive us, please guide the way for us fools. Clayton to Kanzo as he slipped in bed, and as soon as he cried even harder. She kept imagining Kanzo sitting up suddenly and patting her head. No father isn't the type of person to pamper. More likely he yelled at me just about being so noisy. However, neither of us neither of these imaginations came true because it was an undeniable fact that Kanzo had entered an eternal sleep. But even so that she begged the sleeping Kanzo to forgive and help them. It was still only a few hours after his passing. Perhaps his soul was still here listening to her. Believing this, that's what you beg for Kenzo's forgiveness and help even more earnestly. Too nosy. Noisy. I mean, I always said that I hold silence as a virtue. Huh? That voice made us jump up in surprise. She faced in the direction that the voice had come from. She saw Kenzo. She saw Kenzo sitting at the study desk, pulling up his reading glasses. Did you get in a fight with Cross again? Neglecting his wife like that, Cross only inherited my bad traits. But father, what a wretched-looking face was. Wash it. Are you the wife of the successor that you should be a family? You must have left the sermon so you wear such a shameful expression. Yes, Father, and my apologies. Nasu understood. This was just an illusion, one that Nasu had created ever desired to speak with the memory of Kenzo as he once was. No, that wasn't his. She believed that just on how Kenzo's soul had shown itself to her. She was sure that doubting this would cause it to vanish in an instant. She seems that then they said the family headship was passed on. The family has reached its crisis. Yes, Father. I was able to support my husband. I am truly very sorry. <laughs> They were showing me a family so very cursed. It was a terrible statement as to see that that has shipped too. That makes your suffering seem almost cute in comparison. King's was succession that the family headship had come suddenly. At the time, he had been nothing more than a single man from a branch family, far separated from the Ushua family, main family. The main family might have had honor and tradition, but Kenzo had 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 nothing to do with that. Then the principal members of the main family were wiped out in their great canto earthquake along with their business is on top of that there had been complicated anticommunism between the members of the family and the time at the time and the elders had all tried to impose their will on the others in that sinking ship. Because of this they weren't able to eat, able to elect a leader to revive the Ushamiya family. They have found a common ground and selected Kanzo a youth with absolutely no ties to any of the opposing elders to be the head. So the elders hadn't really entrusted Kenzo with the rebuilding of the Ushimiya family. Kenzo had been nothing more than their puppet with arms and legs pulled in opposite directions. Yes, I know a lot about your days of suffering, Father. And then the war started. At the time, I was already tired of life. I hoped I would die in the battlefield, but I wasn't sent to the front lines. However, the set of the war grew worse every day, and time for the disciples' battle on the Japanese mainland seemed to grow ever closer. As terrible as that may sound, I prayed for that day to come quickly. After listening to the approaching footsteps of that reaper day in and day out, it was said that Kenzo started cutting his ties with this world one by one, and not on that day when he had severed all his regrets when it reached a state of enlightenment. It, enlightenment? It has said that he had a mystical experience. It is said that he, he met her, the Golden Witch Beatrice. I made a contract with the witch and was given the power of gold and madness. On that day, the old me died and a new me, possessing the insane power of magic, was born. 
I know, and after the war, you used your ingenious cunning to revive the Ushimiya family. Now, now the deceased elders and who knew Kenzo at the time had whispered to each other that Kenzo must have bumped his head on the battlefield and returned with a different personality. That was how much Kenzo had stood out after the war. Whether the story about Kenzo meeting a witch was true or not, there could be no doubt that the extraordinary experience of war had prepared him for death and let him reach a state of enlightenment. If he wanted to describe the mystical experience following all that as a meeting with a witch, that claim certainly shouldn't be dismissed out of hand. That's right. He returned from the war, conquered the witch Beatrice, and became the head of the Ushimiya family in the truest sense. Correct. Before I met Beatrice, I was nothing more than a puppet, only the head and the name. I only became the head after conquering the Golden Witch. Father, um, well, this Golden Witch aid my husband cross the ladies a new head. Oh, she we all assuming that he has truly succeeded the headship. Well, what do you mean by truly succeeded? I mean, it depends on whether he bears the responsibility and pride of the Ushimiya family head in the truest sense. Now, Suhi, so you should understand this. The headship is not inherited by blood. It is inherited through the spirit and conviction. Even though Cross is my eldest son, he cannot be called a true head if he does not possess these things. And if that spirit were to dwell in human, even uh, someone other than I Cross, they would make a splendid new head. Beatrice has lend her power to the true head. Is that right, Beatrice? When Kinsel called the witch's name, Golden Butterfly seized out of every corner of the room. This fantastical scene had been otherworldly beauty to it. It was like standing in the midst of a blizzard of golden flower petals being blown about a rose garden of gold. As though she stirred the scene in shock, the gold butterflies gathered them from the human shape. Then the witch of the portrait appeared. Indeed, I am the Ushimiya family alchemist, the golden witch Beatrice. I am free to run rampant. I listen to no one's orders. And there's only one person in the world who can control her, me. That is why I'm qualified to be the Ushimiya family head. <laughs> so it's that part of yours that qualifies you. For I require self-confidence and bravery and is the embodiment of the insatiable desire to gain power to match those traits. That is why I control you. Watching men who speak of pride turn those desires into reality can be quite pleasant. The quiet man of action is nothing more than an excuse. He's been extremely lucky. A true monarch also speaks of what he doesn't have, and he makes that pride a reality without fail. If one is to control me, they must possess such a monarch's pride. Do you understand, Natsuhi? A true monarch fears no hardship. They declare that they will overcome anything without fail, even if they haven't, met fi even if they haven't yet figured out how. This gives hope to the weak. They gather, revere the monarch, and swear to his system. This is where power is gained and his word is carried out. And I grieve that into your heart. Yes, father. And as we understood, through this mystical experience, Kenzo was telling her how to prepare herself to overcome hardship, even after his own death. Feeling a warm sensation rise up in her chest, she let the valuable words that Kenzo had given her echo throughout her mind over and over. A true monarch, in other words, the true head of the Ushimiya family must not fear hardship. Such a person must believe they can overcome any hardship. If they can even believe it about themselves, they'll have no chance of overcoming their challenges. She suddenly felt it very ashamed of the way she entered this room, stopping and asking Kenzo what to do. I was foolish. Of course, there's no time for crying when a new Shomia family crosses upon us. And now that we have inherited the Shomia family from you, Father, we must protect its honor no matter what. Oh, even though you can't even draw a blueprint on how to repay Crops' debts? Beatrice laughed unpleasantly. No, that wasn't it. She was testing Natsu to see whether she possessed the mental readiness to be a true monarch. Natsu wasn't confused anymore. She was answered clearly to the Beatrice's eyes. Yes, at this moment, I know not you discovered the method we should pursue. However, my husband is the new head of the issue my family, and I am his supporting wife, so I will proclaim it in my husband's place. Let us hear it. Ushimiya Cross and Nasi will definitely overcome these trials to protect the honor of the Ushimiya family. You have nothing to worry about, Father. Do you know the scope of Cross's death as well as the uh, horrible state things are in? Yes. If the worst happens and we are ordered to leave this venture tomorrow, we won't be able to refuse. During the distrib distribution of the inheritance, the relatives might even file a criminal complaint. However, there is no need to worry. We will repay all of the debts before the end and restore our honor. As she stood at the attention with her resolute attitude, Natsuki proclaimed this clearly with Ushiomiya Kenzo and Beatrice as witnesses. For a while, they remained silent as though waiting Natsuki's resolve. Then Kenzo chuckled and turned away. How vexing. Why couldn't this person have been my son? 
The very fact that a woman with such a disposition married your son is another sign of your great luck. Beatrice, this is my final order. Now that you are no longer the head, I am not obligated to obey your orders. Oh, I in that case obey the orders of the new who should be a family head. You are no longer the head and the cross is not yet the head. Whom are you suggesting that I serve? I will leave that to you. It is up to you to decide who is qualified to succeed the Ushimi from the head and who is fitting to bear the mark of that one winged eagle. You will ensure that it is so. I refuse. I won't listen to the order of a man who is at the head. No, this is different. This is the will, the last order that the head left behind for you. <laughs> the name seems I will have to obey. I feel like I can be quite accommodating. Liar. Oh. You're only one doing this because it caught your interest, aren't you? I can't hide anything from you, can I? Natsuhi, yes, father. Go ahead and overcome your hardship. Yes, that might have seemed like a mere response to Natsuhi, but to Kenzo and Beatrice, it seemed to be something of much greater significance. Beatrice nodded deeply, and with emotion that's looking as her dress, she bowed deeply before Natsuhi. The Ushimi family alchemist, the gold on which Beatrice is present. I shall give you my aid to assist the Ushimi family in overcoming another crisis. Thank you. I will need your power. We will most certainly overcome these trials. I will not hold back on my support for your cause, but there is something I must warn you about beforehand. I understand that your troubles now could be solved if I were to grant you a vast quantity of gold like I did when I saved Kenzo from this crisis. However, that is something I cannot do. Is that so? Sorry, Natsu, you beat just gold that came from a contract limited to my generation. It was agreed that it could only be passed on to another if the person solves it, which is Epitaph. That gold is sealed away by the epitaph. As long as that is not solved, you cannot be given the golden magic. I understand. Then I shall search for another method by which we can save ourselves from this crisis. My husband said that his plan will take time, but he also said that it will be surely be sufficient to repay our debts. If we could buy enough time for that to happen, we'll be able to overcome this trial. Go ahead, Natsuhi. Continue. But Kenzo is already dead. The doctor and servants are preparing his funeral. You are about to contact the family members. By your own hand, you will bring an end to this play for time. How charming is the guillotine where you're lowered the blade yourself. Ah, um, start all night, so he looked up at the ceiling. There wasn't actually anything there, but even so, Natsuhi had found something. So that magical power has descended. Natsuhi, have you made up your mind? What magic of miracles do you desire from me? Okay, I need to take a, a quick reading break, guys. <clears throat> okay, guys, I am back. Once again, all those who have witnessed Kendo's old corpse were gathered in the study. Cross was still impatient and clutching at his head. Genji was expressionless as ever. Nanjo and Kumasawa were more bewildered expressions on their faces. But in stark contrast to all of them, Nasui wore a resolute expression. Here, let me ask you one more time. Your plan for raising money is absolutely certain. Y yes, give it to a year, and I'll just laugh at you anyway, so don't leave your fruit. But it's just impossible to hope for anything right now. Then we will wait. But you said it yourself. Father is already dead. Father has not passed away. He's still there, as healthy as ever. When that's what he said, everyone jumped and looked up. Because they instantly understood what those words meant. However, of course, the one didn't get it right away and asked her. What do you mean by that? Father's already in reality right there. I will say it again. Father is still in the good health. He is busy with his research. So he'll be even less able to leave his study than usual. Because of this, we must handle all external affairs ourselves. So that Father can devote himself to his research without being burdened by meaningless tasks. In short, nothing will change from the way things have been. Do you understand, Genji? Yes, the furniture of the one wing and will continue to serve the Master. Kumasawa and you, Dr. Nancho, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, um, is that truly all right, Nancho, your son? It may be true that Father passed away today, but if everything that is right here right now believes that we can revive Father for magic, it is impossible, madame, that's just too much. The time of death will be made clear during the autopsy. We can't stop it from looking suspicious. Father will not pass away, so there will be no reason for there to be an autopsy. Of course, she was a plan to make it seem like Kenzo would live forever. The fake life given to Kenzo would only last until Cross to repay his debts. After that, Kenzo's soul would finally be able to rest in peace. Nanjo repeatedly said that the time of death would be discovered during the autopsy, but Nasuki kept saying that this wouldn't be a problem. 
father will not pass away by being reported dead. Uh, I see he'll be reported missing. After clapping his hands together, Carl stood up, shaking his fists. Yes, once we manage to pay back the debt and finish our preparations for laying father to rest, we will now announce the father has disappeared. Rokinjima's vast, uncultivated forest was perfect place to stick to disappearance. One day, Kinsu will go to the forest for a walk and never return. They will search for him without success and then be forced to report his disappearance. If he disappears, we can follow a report of his death even without a corpse. In other words, we can hide him long enough to have him declared legally dead. But do you think, Dr. Nancho, there won't be any problems that way? Yes, that might work. Is that really okay, madame? If we stay silent, then I'm sure we could keep the master's death a secret. However, if we were to soup up even once, it would let someone find out. Kuma Sawa, don't be so loud. Father is sleeping right over there, correct? Are you trying to wake him up? It is in a corpse. Kenzo is sleeping. As the Tsuhi has said, that Kenzo lay quietly in his bed as though there was nothing at all odd about her words. Come try to remember what form did you have? What sort of life did you enjoy? Once again, a storm of gold butterflies started to swell, covering Kinzo's cold body. Then, after the butterflies exploded into fine gold powder and disappeared, just like those fairy tales that have been told over and over since long ago, Kinzo slowly opened his eyes and sat up. The father. Natsuhi, let me first make one thing clear. I did not coax you into doing this because of my attachment to life. You liar. Don't tell me you didn't anticipate this at least a little. How does it feel, Kenzo? How does it your body? It isn't bad, but it feels somewhat like being in a dream. I feel light. You're being that was it permitted to remain in this world, yet you still remain here. Don't start complaining about a little discomfort now. Is your body truly alright? Is it really okay? Mm -hmm. Actually, it feels quite pleasant. If this is what the world after death feels like, playing the ghost might not be half bad. How is this, Atsuhi? Kenzo has revived. That means the funeral is unnecessary. Your hardship has been resolved. Beatrice. As though she tried to find the words of gratitude or miss her confusion, Beatrice wackled her pointer finger and spoke. There is no need for thanks. The realtor is allowed to be proud. I will not pay heed to requests, but I will follow orders. Even so, I'll say it. Thank you. That's why you brought some time for my husband. We will handle the rest. Be warned, Atsuhi. Kenzo may have revived, but this is not an eternal thing. It will only continue as long as my magic does. Be warned that the magic resisting toxin might destroy the magic. You must understand the laws of magic correctly working hard to maintain it. Uh, I can show you a miracle, but it is your role to grasp and hold it. Of course, we definitely won't neglect the miracle you have given us. Very well. Yes, it will appear mysterious need to be changed out once in a while, just like floor mats. I like it. I shall serve you, Ushomi and Natsuhi. I am the Ushomiya family alchemist in which Beatrice. Call my name whenever you wish. I shall appear and grant you a miracle. Thank you. I am Ushomiya Natsuhi. I will employ you and protect the honor of the Ushomiya family. guys I think I'm gonna end the video here um I think it's been I don't know like an hour or maybe something something like that um so anyways guys I'm gonna save here and I'll see you guys next time <laughs>